Hi YouTube, my name's Sean Connors and this is Outsiders and this is uh, campaign builder number three. Now on this particular part of the program I'm going to be showing you what I've been doing over the last couple of days. Now I'm still currently working on the player documents and handouts but obviously my thought processes now must turn to the grander scheme of things and start mapping those out. So this is actually going to be my particular book for the campaign ahead. Now in the first part of this book, and again I don't know how well this is going to show up, but I've mapped out the initial introduction, so I'll read that just to give some flavour to it. And underneath the introduction, I've begun mapping out the various areas, if you like, or stories. It's an overall story arc of what I think the player, what the player should be doing at any at a particular given level. But of course, like all good stories, you want as many layers as possible. And somebody asked the question before about why do I refer to games as onions, which sounds like an odd thing to say. It's because an onion has layers, and that was the same thing as Shrek, so apologies if that sounded a bit odd, but a, a good game has many layers, and that's the ultimate, until you funnel down to the actual overall story arc and the real crux of the campaign. So a quick intro would be this. The deity Tiamat, creator of evil dragonkind, has long sought domination of the world for herself and her, her protégé. For eons, she has struggled against Bayamut, the king of good dragons, in a conflict called the Dragonfall War, and most people believed that this battle would last for a millennia to come. Recently, however, Tiamat unveiled her latest and most terrifying tactic. She created diverse and numerous creatures with the blood of chromatic dragons, and sent forth these spawns to spread dest destruction and evil. The incursion of evil dragon blood creatures threatens the balance of the war, and by extension, the very world itself. So that's the introduction, and if nothing gets anybody fired up, that's got to, to be honest. Um, behind that, I've begun looking at... Uh, the various rank system within the game. So uh, I've used the British ranking system for the army, so it's from private all the way up to field marshal. And I've looked at, on the same side of that at the moment, about magic users and a ranking system within their um, within within their guilds. So from student up to Ipsissimus, which basically is Grand Master, which I love that. Um, I've also looked at the party point system in a little bit more detail. Again, that's that's on here. And what that actually looks like now is that there are several areas where a player can gain party points that's through prayer so that's daily prayer fasting um, confession or taking penance daily mass high mass feast mass service sacrifice and quest sacrifice and quest is fantastic it came to me in a flash really about when you think about religions and what's brilliant about it with all these things i've set a target number for the system i'm using none of them are easy even praying for um, you know, daily prayers and stuff, it's not easy, it's not given that anybody early on in the game can do that with any sort of success, and that's the whole point, it should take time for the characters to get any party, you've got to work towards it. But the party points will be used for uh, recalling spells, maybe making spells more powerful, but not, not any great shakes, but just a nice touch for the clerical side of the game. But I love the sacrifice and quest, it gives an automatic um, option for... Um, side missions which is superb and I'm really pleased with that. Um, the final part that I've got on here is I've started to write up the crafting rules. Now in my game I'm using Pathfinder so apologies it will not work for yours, it may not work for yours. Um, I've personally not been a big fan of the crafting rules for items in in D&D stroke Pathfinder because yeah, most players don't ever use them because you know there's better things to spend your feats on so I'm gonna make these feats um, given so the way I've worked it out is that a, instead of having the current feats that work the system bar one, this is what will happen at third level, a player will receive craft minor magic items. So they can start to begin to craft items up to 5,000 gold piece in value. Of course, they've got to follow the crafting rules. Um, at sixth level, they will receive uh, craft medium magic item, which is up to 25,000 gold. At ninth level, they will receive craft ma major magic item, which is... Um, which is what they will receive at ninth, and then at 12th level the final one casts Supreme Magic Item, which is basically unlimited. The ninth level one is up to 50,000 gold pieces, sorry I didn't mention that. But of course you still got to follow the craft rules. The craft rules very simply is that at every level, every player goes up, they get a certain amount of crafting points. For certain ranks in various crafting skills and other stuff, they'll also receive bonus crafting points. They can support each other and they can bear the experience points cost shared, which I like. And the basic rule of thumb with this is the craft cost is half the, craft cost is half the market price in gold piece divided by five for craft points. Let me just quickly explain that. A plus one great sword 
market price 2,000 gold pieces, craft cost 1,000 gold, so you halve the cost, hence you make the money go further than the other campaign builder, and it costs 200 craft points. That's basically one-fifth of the overall actual market price, which is lovely. So you can quickly see where it's going, plus it would also cost them 40 XP per 1,000 gold piece value. So that's, that's where we are. Final part so far on the crafting in this particular bit is... I was talking about experience points, and what I've done, I've created a sheet, and again, I don't know how well this shows up, and I've begun sculpting out the various sessions, because I've always, one of the biggest problems you stumble with, with DMing is, I want the players to savour some of the levels, and I, I do want to be a slower progression, but at the same time, I don't want it to be too slow, that there's no point turning up, because it takes eight years to get a level. I want it to feel that early on, you pick up levels reasonably quickly, but then later on, it actually gets much slower. So I've actually sculpted it out at roughly what session a player should be in terms of levels. Now, you've got to remember, I'm probably working this out over... At the moment, we're probably looking at... This is turning into about a two-year, maybe two-and-a-half-year campaign, as it stands looking at this. And I'm building my campaign over the premise that characters will start off at first level and reach 20th. So that's currently where I am so far. This is my master book. I'll still have plenty of work to do on this, plus what I've been doing for the players. The player stuff is almost finished. I've got a main story arc, and to be honest with you, I'm going to share this with you now. So if you're a player of mine at this point, I would appreciate that you switch off. Hopefully now that they've gone, the overall story arc, without getting into too much detail, and it should be no surprise, the ultimate battle at the very, very end should be against a dragon of some kind. It won't be the chromatic dragon but it would be a dragon of some kind, so it will be a significant threat at high level, but it wants to be done with a unique twist, which is what all good writing should be about. And I really like the idea of something very, very epical at the very end, and I'm still tailoring around what that's going to look like, but I can imagine a scene where the characters are already you know, being hailed as heroes for the work that they've done throughout the war. The war has come to a close, because of their efforts, because at this stage at high level play they should actually be commanding the battlefield really and dictating the pace of the combat and it would appear that everything has been won through and because of what will happen in the game the emperor of the world will have died near the end leaving his heir, his son, to be the successor and um, the, the characters will of course be invited along to his succession and during that piece, as it, what it will appear to be a mop-up session for the end of the campaign the the actual cathedral, the huge place where this will be taking place, will suddenly come under attack with this dragon just coming in to the cathedral, literally smashing the roof off and fighting the characters on the floor. And they'll have to save the Emperor's son and finally finish the battle off against the dragons at this point. But I want to leave it with a tentative clue of something more to come. So the final scene of the dragon falling and then in the distance a much smaller one flying away. And I love love that. And that's that's where I'm going at the moment. It isn't set in stone, so don't get me wrong. It's just some thoughts I'm having about how I'd like it to finish up, whether it actually goes that direction or maybe something else happens. Who knows? But there you are. This has been Campaign Builder 3. Hopefully it's been of some benefit to you. Thank you for your thoughts. Until the next time, happy gaming and take care.